Hey everyone, this is Pastor Chuck right here in Victor Outreach, Cape Town, and I'm so excited um, to uh, be able to start this new series that we're getting into. And again, we've been in the country here, uh, Victor Outreach, in the country of South Africa for 12 years. And in these 12 years, we've been able to get the church to a decent place in Cape Town. Uh, right now, we're hitting about a thousand people in the church. And then not only have we been able to break those barriers within our church, but we've also been able to plant churches throughout the country. And so some of the things that we've learned from our founder, Pastor Sonny, um, we've been able to implement right here in South Africa. And so us as pastors, we're, we're talking and thinking that we would love to be able to take some of the things that we've learned in South Africa and make it available to the family that's out there. And so this teaching that I'm going to be teaching is something that I taught in one of our conferences, and we're going to break it into different segments. So it's going to be a series. So I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. And again, the, the title of this series is entitled Breaking Barriers. And um, it, it's going to be looking at different things internally that need to be broken in order for the ministry to, to experience the growth that God wants it to bring. So I'm going to go ahead and start reading in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 18, and then we'll go ahead and get into this teaching this morning. Uh, the Bible reads like this in Matthew 16, verse 18, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. And then in Acts chapter 2, verse 46, the Bible says, every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts, they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Verse 47 says, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And when you and I hear this portion of scripture and we hear Jesus's promise in the book of Matthew and then we see in the book of Acts that not only was this a promise that Jesus made, but then you see the fulfillment of that promise coming to pass. And the promise is that God will build his church. And if God has promised to build his church, then I believe that God wants to build a church that is growing. And so when you think about that, God wanting to grow his church, then there's no reason why our ministries and our churches should not be experiencing growth. If that's God's heart and that's God's desire, is that ministries and church would continue to experience growth, then you and I have to ask our question, what is hindering the growth from taking place within our ministry or within our church? I like one of the quotes that I read from Rick Warren, the author of The Purpose Driven Life. He says, instead of asking, what do I need to do to grow my church? We should be asking, what am I doing that is stopping my church from growing? And many times I believe it is that. It's that it's not only what we're doing within the ministry, it's not only some of the things that we're not doing. A lot of times we look at what am I not doing to uh, keep my church growing or keep my ministry growing, but sometimes it's the things that we're already doing. Sometimes it's the things that are already happening, some of the cultures and some of the systems and some of the things and some of the way people relate to each other that can actually hinder your church or hinder your ministry from growing. And so I've identified five. I've identified five barriers that I believe that any pastor or any leader uh, is looking at these barriers and identifies these barriers. If he's willing to make the adjustments and he's willing to pay attention and put energy towards those barriers, then he will begin to not only break those barriers, but experience the growth that God wants to bring to his church and to his ministry. The first barrier that I believe is important that you and I uh, look at or identify that needs to be broken and that sometimes hinders the growth or the breakthrough that God wants to bring to the church is our personal barriers. Uh, the, the first point is breaking personal leadership barriers. If a person wants to be able to grow their ministry, they first have to be able to look at themselves. Look at themselves, make the adjustments within their own personal life, break the barriers in their own mentality, break the barriers in their own life so that they can be the leader that God wants them to be. Uh, I read a, in a, a book called uh, Breaking Your Church's Culture. He says that your church is, by Sam Chan, he says your church is a distinct reflection of who you are. If your thinking is sloppy, your church will be sloppy. If you are disorganized, your church will be disorganized. If you are greedy, the leaders under you will be greedy, giving less and less of themselves and always asking for more. If our information on what needs to be done is limited, then our church or our ministry will reflect that limitation. So if our church is going to change, we first must change. 
This goes back to the law of the lid that many of us are familiar with. The capacity of the leader will determine the growth of the church. The leadership capacity, the pastor's capacity, the minister's capacity. Uh, if you're overseeing a particular area of ministry, your personal capacity will determine the growth of your church or your ministry. You have to ask ourselves, are we the lid? Are we the bottleneck of the ministry? And if we can identify that, then we can make the adjustments necessary so that we can continue to see and experience the growth that God wants to bring. When we as a team here in Cape Town, were looking to the future and discussing the level that we believe God wanted to take our church under our leadership and under our founder, Pastor Sonny would constantly challenge us to take the ministry to the next level. And he would challenge us to, to, ch to get our church and get the ministry to a thousand people. So the first question that I had to ask myself is, am I a thousand member church leader? And then after asking myself that, I had to be honest with the answer. At that particular time, I was not on that level. I had to face it, the, the insecurities and the things that come with asking those questions, and I had to be honest with myself. I was not a thousand member church leader. Then the next question I had to ask is not only looking at me personally, but I also had to look at our team. Is our team a thousand member church team? And we had to be honest, and these were the conversations that began to take place. And at that particular time, we were about 700, maybe 750 people within our church. There were certain ministries that were established that were being successful, but they had kind of come to a place that they could only bring us that far. So as we looked at ourselves and looked at our team, we had to be honest about some of the areas that needed to be worked with before we could expect a, a breakthrough or expect the growth that God wanted to bring to our church. We were 750, we were believing God to get to 1,000, and the barrier wasn't what we were doing on the outside, the barrier was what we were doing on the inside. It was happening within our own leadership capacity. And if we were gonna be able to take the ministry into the future that God wanted to take it into, we were gonna have to break those barriers within our personal lives. And I believe it's the same with you. I'm not sure where your ministry's at or where your church may be at. Uh, maybe you're at 500, maybe you're at 250, maybe you're pioneering and you're just getting the ministry started and you're at 100 people. Remember, the capacity or the growth of your church or even the condition of your church is always a reflection of the leader. If the leader is disorganized, the ministry will be disorganized. If the ministry lacks passion, the leader probably lacks passion. And so before we look to the ministry, let's first look at ourselves. And when we looked at ourselves, I, I, I got a few quotes that I read that helped us to you know, kind of engage a little bit. The first one's from Russell Lowe. He says, no one can produce great, th great things who is not thoroughly sincere in dealing with himself. John Maxwell says, you must know yourself to grow yourself. See, every effective leader that is going to be able to reach their full potential is personally responsible for these four areas within his own life or within her own life. The first one is our head. I believe that uh, when it comes to the knowledge, when it comes to the understanding of the ministry, we are not, we, we cannot depend on somebody else to give us the information or to, to grow us when it comes to our thinking. Our mentality has to grow, and we got to take personal responsibility of growing our mentality. The knowledge that a person acquires is their responsibility to go after it. A leader is a reader, and a reader is a leader. And if we're going to grow, we have to ask ourselves, what are we doing personally to grow ourselves? We as a team needed to read more. We needed to learn more. We needed to be more aggressive about going after things that were going to help us grow in the way we think. I heard one person say, leadership is not necessarily what you do, but it's how you think. And we had to discipline ourselves to have something consistent in place that was dealing with our own mentality. That if we were going to see the, the growth that God wanted to bring, it was going to be a reflection of the way we think. It was going to be a reflection of the way we do things. And we couldn't just pray for it. We couldn't just pray it in. We had to be able to be willing to make adjustments personally, to make the growth steps necessary so that we can experience the growth that God wanted to bring. And the first area that we needed to target was our own mentality. We needed to transition 
from a medium church mentality to a big church mentality. Our minds needed to operate on another level if we wanted to see our church go to another level. Uh, I believe that when it comes to the uh, delegating and the empowering, we had to grow in this. Uh, we had to not only lift our mentality, but we had to lift the people that we were working with, uh, their mentality. See, the most important practical thing I believe that we did when it came to developing our mentality was that we had to be aggressive about what we were connected to. See, a person can never produce something that they've never been exposed to. If a person has been exposed to a certain level of ministry or to a certain mentality, as they're being exposed to that level or as they're being exposed to that mentality, they too are growing in their mentality. For example, whenever I travel to the States, for those of the Victor Outreach family that are listening, I always make it a purpose and a point to visit our mother church. I always make it a point and a purpose to visit Victor Outreach San Diego. And when I go into those settings, the mother church, the San Diego, the Victor Outreach Whittier, uh, when I position myself as a leader in a certain level of ministry, in a certain mindset of ministry, it automatically begins to work on the way I think. And it works on my mentality. It, it establishes within me a new reference point. It keeps me fresh. If I'm constantly comparing myself with myself, then I'll always be the best. But when I can put myself into settings that are going to challenge me, then I too can be uh, challenged to grow. I just had a conversation yesterday with our founder, Pastor Sonny, and I was asking him some questions on how to be effective in not only building the church, but also being effective in building the ministry in different countries and different cities. And the first thing he said to me is that I should take a trip while there, while he's going to Guadalajara, I should also come to Guadalajara. So while I'm in that setting in Guadalajara, I can watch the way he's moving. I could see the way he's thinking. So what am I doing? I'm exposing myself to a mindset and a mentality that is able to get success so that I too in return, if I can deal with my mentality, I can experience the same success that God wants to bring. Again, this is Pastor Chuck right here in Cape Town, South Africa. We hope that you've been blessed throughout these last segments of Breaking Barriers. This is just one teaching of many, and we're looking forward to bringing more content to our YouTube channel. So again, if you like or enjoyed the content, please go down to the bottom of the video, hit the like button, subscribe to our Victory Outreach Cape Town YouTube channel, and we're gonna do our best to get fresh content out to you. So we love you, we thank you, keep us in prayer as we continue to move forward. God bless you, and we hope to see you soon.